tonight. Weather rules. Gujarat city is inundated as heavy rains with cyclonic winds batter India's west coastline with over two dozen killed. Rescue operations are underway. Protesters pardoned. 57 Bangladeshi citizens who protested in the Gulf state walked free as the President of the United Arab Emirates relents. Down to debate. The US presidential candidates Kamala Harris and Donald Trump brace for their first debate against each other. The high-stakes showdown is just over today. And a dog's dream. A veterinary clinic in Pennsylvania experiments a new drug to improve overall canine health that helps dogs live longer and happier. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ava Verna, World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Vinuth Warnasuriya. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. There are some key developments that occurred around the globe this evening and we begin our bulletin in neighboring India. Drone footage captured in western India's Gujarat state showed a large of swathes of residential district inundated today after heavy rains led to a massive flooding. Heavy rains triggered by cyclonic winds battered India's coastal areas along the Arabian Sea last week, flooding cities in Gujarat and forcing authorities to close schools and evacuate thousands. Well, at least 28 people were killed in Gujarat last week due to the severe weather and some drowned and others were hit by falling trees. The weather department said in their forecast to receive above average rainfall in this month after surplus rains last month. <laughs> Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in Singapore today to deepen strategic partnerships with the Southeast Asian country at the invitation of his Singaporean counterpart Lawrence Wong after wrapping his visit to Brunei. During the two-day visit, the Prime Minister will connect the three generations of Singapore's leadership. The Prime Minister will receive an official welcome at the Parliament House and call on President Tharman Shanmugaratnam. Upon his arrival at the Shanghai Airport from Brunei, he was welcomed by the Indian High Commissioner to Singapore, Silpak Ambule, and Singapore's High Commissioner to India, Simon Wong, among other officials. This visit comes days after Mr. Wong took over and months following Modi beginning his third term as Prime Minister. Modi will also meet with Singaporean business leaders and interact with those in the country's semiconductor ecosystem. This visit will build synergies in semiconductor ecosystems of Singapore and India. Both Prime Ministers will visit a semiconductor manufacturing facility. They said memorandums of understanding will be signed for cooperation in manpower skilling in the semiconductor sector. The President of the United Arab Emirates has pardoned 57 Bangladeshis who were sentenced to long prison terms for staging protests in the Gulf state against their own government. Three of the defendants received life sentences in July, while 53 others were jailed for 10 years and one for 11 years. They were charged with gathering in a public place with the aim of inciting unrest. The protests were held against the then Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Kasina, in the weeks before she was ousted from power. Protests are effectively illegal in the UAE, where foreigners make up almost 90% of the population. Bangladeshis are the third largest expatriate group. After hundreds were killed during weeks of unrest in Bangladesh, Sheikh Kasina was forced to flee the country for India last month. The UAE president's decision to pardon the protesters follows a conversation with Bangladeshi's interim prime minister, Nobel laureate Muhammad Yunus, who was installed following Ms. Asina's flight. The protesters were released on the basis that the gatherings had no criminal intent and the evidence was insufficient. According to President Vladimir Zelensky, two ballistic missiles struck Ukraine's central city of Poltava, hitting a hospital and educational institution and damaging the Military Institute of Communications building, and this comes as Foreign Minister of Ukraine has resigned. This destroyed building a sign of the deadliest single Russian attack on Ukraine this year. Two ballistic missiles struck the central city of Poltava on Tuesday, hitting a hospital, an educational institution, and damaging the Military Institute of Communications building, according to President Vladimir Zelensky. In a video, he said people found themselves under the rubble of the Institute of Communications building. Many were saved, but dozens have been killed, and over 200 others were injured in the attack. Zelensky ordered a full investigation. 
Moscow has intensified its missile and drone attacks on Ukraine two and a half years into the full-scale war. Ukraine was pummeled by the heaviest bombardment to date last week, while on Monday ballistic and cruise missiles targeted Kyiv. Ukraine has fought back, launching more than 158 drones at Russia at the weekend, damaging an oil refinery near Moscow and a power station. Zelensky repeated his calls for more Western air defences and urged allies to allow their long-range weapons to be used for strikes deeper into Russian territory. Kyiv's troops have mounted their first large-scale cross-border assault into Russia's Kursk region, for which Moscow has vowed to retaliate. Russia did not immediately comment on Tuesday's attack. Well, according to the military officials, people gathered in northeastern Nigeria to bury the victims of the suspected Boko Haram attack in Yobi state, which killed at least 37 people. People gathered on Tuesday in northeastern Nigeria to bury the victims of a suspected Boko Haram attack in Yobe state. Suspected Islamist militants belonging to the group roared into Mafa village on motorcycles on Sunday afternoon, opening fire on a market and setting shops and homes ablaze. An early estimate from a military official said at least 37 people were killed in the attack. But residents and officials said the death toll could be even higher, with villagers still missing and feared dead after fighters chased them into the bush. Yobe is one of three states at the front line of an insurgency that has lasted 15 years. Thousands of Nigerians have been killed and more than two million people have been displaced. Well, let's go in for a short commercial break now. The real news coming on the other side. Well, on the road to the White House tonight, the high-stakes debate is just a week away. Harris has held at least two mock debates while former Trump is meeting with policy advisers and foregoing formal prep. Tonight, with their first debate just one week away, former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris preparing for what could be the most consequential moment of this campaign. In a podcast interview today, Trump projecting confidence while adding a rare acknowledgement that he lost the last election. I've done well with debates. I mean, I became president. Then the second time I got millions more votes than I got the first time. So I was told if I got 63 million, which is what I got the first time, you, you, you would win. You can't not win. And I got millions of more votes than that. And, uh, lost by a whisker. Trump, never a fan of formal debate prep, has been reviewing policy with advisors, including former Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, who once challenged Harris herself on the debate stage. Harris taking a much more formal approach as she prepares to debate Trump and what will be their first face-to-face -face meeting. We know this is gonna be a tight race to the very end. Yes. It's gonna be a tight race to the very end. So let's not pay too much attention to those polls. Her campaign bringing on Hillary Clinton's former senior advisor, Philippe Reines, who helped Clinton prepare for the 2016 debates to once again play the role of Trump. The vice president knows she has to make up ground on the economy, where polls give Trump an edge. She's set to roll out a new phase of her agenda in New Hampshire tomorrow, focused on building up small businesses by expanding tax deductions. Harris positioning herself a champion of the middle class. Unlike Donald Trump, I will always put the middle class and working class families first. Still in the United States, Linda Sun, a former aide to the New York Governor Katie Hochul, left a New York City courthouse after being found guilty for secretly acting as the agent of the Chinese government in exchange for millions of dollars in compensation and gifts. Both Sun and her husband, Chris Hu, were arrested Tuesday morning. Each pleaded not guilty to the criminal charges. Federal prosecutors in Brooklyn said that while working in state government, Sun blocked representatives of the Taiwanese government from meeting with officials and sought to arrange for a high-level New York state official to visit China. In exchange, Chinese government representatives allegedly arranged for millions of dollars in transactions for Sun's husband, who had business activities in China. 
Prosecutors said the couple used money to buy a 2024 Ferrari Roma sports car, as well as property on New York's Long Island and in Honolulu worth about $6 million. Governor Hochul was not accused of any wrongdoing. A spokesperson for Hochul said her office fired Sun in March 2023 after discovering evidence of misconduct, reported Sun's actions immediately to authorities, and has assisted law enforcement throughout the process. The judge ordered Sun released on $1.5 million bond and Chris Hu on $500,000 bond. French Interior Minister General Darmanin said at least 12 migrants died after they capsized the boat on its way across the channel to Britain, adding that rescue operations were underway to find two people still missing. Emergency services tend to survivors pulled from the sea off northern France after their boat capsized in the deadliest such disaster this year. At the scene, French Interior Minister Gérald Darmanin thanked the emergency services and local fishermen for their quick response. The less than seven metre long boat was carrying dozens of migrants when it reportedly ran into difficulty off Cap Grinet. While attempting the perilous crossing to Britain across the Channel, one of the world's busiest shipping lanes where currents are strong. The UK Interior Minister called the deaths horrifying and deeply tragic as she criticised the gangs behind the crossings. Despite efforts by both the French and British governments to stop them, migrants continue to board small, unseaworthy vessels to reach the UK. More than 21,000 people have made the journey this year, while at least 30 have died or gone missing while trying to cross, a figure that doesn't include the latest death. And finally tonight, a good news for all the dog owners, as a new experimental drug has been introduced in a veterinary practice in Quakertown, Pennsylvania. The medication is intended to preserve metabolic health, which in turn helps them live healthier and happier longer. All dog owners want the same thing for their furry friends to live longer. Now, there is a clinical trial taking place for an experimental drug that may just do that. So far, about 50 dogs are enrolled, and the veterinary clinic is looking for more to take their daily pill. Like most studies, half the pups are getting the experimental drug. The other half gets placebos. The FDA states that the trial has a, quote, reasonable expectation of effectiveness. Pill will work on the principle of caloric restriction, but don't worry. Dogs will eat normal amounts. The study hopes to do tests on over 1,000 dogs. To be considered, the animals must be over 10 years old and must be a larger breed. And with that, we mark the end of today's bulletin. We will see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings across the globe. Stay tuned as Sanovi Mudan Nayaka will join you next with the Nightly Business Report. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.